Invisibility, the ultimate camouflage. Have you ever wished you could conceal yourself with an invisibility cloak like Harry Potter? Well, although we can't make ourselves invisible quite yet, there's some promising advancements in the science behind invisibility. Scientists have recently developed several ways, some simple and some involving new technologies, to hide objects from view. One simple and inexpensive method is the Rochester cloak. It uses four lenses with two different focal lengths lined up at a precise distance and it works pretty well. At this spot, this pencil can appear invisible. The only problem with this one is that it only works from a certain angle. For an invisibility cloak to work, it needs to bend the light around the object that it is cloaking. Think of it this way, if I try to blow out this candle with an object in the way, like this, the air from my mouth can't reach the candle so it won't extinguish. But if I put this curved container over the object and then I blow, the air will follow the curvature of the container due to the Kawanda effect, which is basically the tendency of a fluid to follow a curved surface. This extinguishes the candle and is exactly what we want an invisibility cloak to do, but instead of air, it bends light. The term for the bending of the path of a light wave as it passes across the boundary between two media is refraction. Refraction is caused by the change in speed of a light beam when it changes medium. I'll demonstrate my RC car. It's driving on the wood floor and comes across a rug at an angle. This will slow it down. Because the front left tire hits the rug first, the car will turn or bend its path towards that tire. Like the car, a beam of light will bend when traveling from one medium to another. This is what causes a straw to look bent in a glass of water. To find the speed which light travels in any given material, you must calculate the refractive index. The refractive index is just the number which, if divided by the speed of light in a vacuum, about 300 million meters per second, gives you the speed of light in that material. We can use Snell's law to calculate the refractive indices of any material. In our toy car analogy, as long as we assume that when the car is traveling on the wood floor it's at its max speed, like light in a vacuum, and we know the angles of the car in relation to the boundary of the rug, we can find the refractive index of the rug. Solving for n, we get approximately 1.97 as our refractive index. Why does calculating the refractive index matter in the science behind invisibility? Well, here's why. Metamaterials. Scientists are developing new optical smart materials that have properties not found in nature. For example, they can have a negative refractive index. This means that the light bends in a way that is opposite to how it would bend naturally. These materials only work within one part of the visible spectrum, but researchers are hopeful that they can soon design them to work within the full range of visible light. What is exciting about metamaterials is that their optical properties can theoretically be applied to the interaction between an object and any type of wave. In fact, scientists have recently created a thermal cloak, which shields objects from heat. Imagine if metamaterials could one day be designed to divert seismic vibrations around a building, which would basically make it invisible to earthquakes. It's no longer just about the thrill of ducking under a cloak to hide in plain sight. Harnessing the power of smart materials can help us solve some of the world's most challenging problems. I'm Dimitri Sidida, and thank you for watching.